Hello and welcome back to another Cookie Tech video. So today I'm going to be teaching you on how to add a cooldown into your application center. Just before we start today's video, I want to state that you must have done part 1 of this ranking series. If you haven't followed that tutorial, go back now and rewatch it or watch it for the first time. There should be a link in the description down below if you scroll down. Before I teach you on how to make this system, I'm just going to show you how it works. So in short, this script will prevent people from constantly reapplying to your application center so it's just a cooldown to prevent people from constantly reapplying so if they mess up a question they can't easily just redo the question to find the answer and you can see here I am inside of Roblox Studio where I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the system inside of my script I've made it so that you can only join after two minutes don't worry about all of this I'm gonna be explaining what all of it means just after this example and now let's just play the game Now you can see, here we are inside of the game, nothing's happened just yet except my plugin came up but we can just close that and you can see nothing has happened just yet and then let's try rejoining and let's see what happens. Let's click play. And you can see when we're loading in, the spinner comes up and look, you were kicked from this experience. You're currently on training cooldown. We'll actually edit this to say application cooldown. Since I use this actually in my training center, so this can come in handy in all scenarios. So you can use it for training cooldowns, event cooldowns, application cooldowns, whatever you really want. And you can see it says please rejoin in two minutes. So you can see it's currently 22.40 down here. And let's wait two minutes. So when it's 22.42 we'll rejoin and let's see if we can rejoin. So now I'm just going to fast forward so you guys don't have to wait the entire time. Alright you can now see that it's 22.42. And if we try rejoining the game we should see that we aren't kicked from the game. Let's just test that theory. We load into Roblox Studio here. And now, once we load in, you can see that we're not kicked and we can interact with everything, so nothing's broken, everything's the exact same as before. And then we'll do one more test, and if we try rejoining, the cooldown will be re-enabled. Okay, and now we're going to hop into Roblox Studio where we'll begin to code the system. Alright, welcome to Roblox Studio. Like I said earlier on, make sure you followed part 1 of the Quiz Center tutorial. If you followed part 1, you should have remembered we created a place inside of Roblox Studio. If we load into the file, we should be faced with what I'm seeing right here. So make sure you have Explorer open, and we're going to start by making a brand new script inside of Surface Script Service. So we don't have to worry about this script, we're just going to create a brand new script by clicking this plus button. And then we're going to click script and I'm just going to call this cooldown manager. You can call it whatever you want but I just want to be able to find this quickly so I'm just going to call it that. Now we're going to start off by using a data store. A data store is basically a place where we can store and manage data. So we're going to start by using Roblox's data store service. So this system is completely free, requires no third party tools and can be done in completely inside of Roblox Studio. So we're going to start by getting the data store service. To do this we're going to say local data store service equals game get service. So we're going to get the service data store service. Now that we've defined that we're going to define our actual data store itself. So we're going to call this the last online data store and we're just going to say local last online. So here we're setting our variables so we can call it later on in the script. And then we're actually going to use the data store service we defined up here, data store service to get our data store. And then we're going to put in the name of our data store. So I want to call my data store player last online you can call this what you want 
I would personally go with a unique name like Player Last Online because you don't want two scripts to have the same name otherwise everything goes wrong. But we're just going to set it to Player Last Online so it's all unique. And now next of all we need to set up our minimum seconds. So I'm just going to drop a line and I'm going to say local min seconds with an underscore equal 120 and then we're just going to have a look at this line. So minimum seconds, what I'm defining that variable is as how many seconds you'll have to wait before the cooldown ends. And yes, this is measured in seconds. I want the cooldown period to last for, let's say, 30 minutes. So to do this, we know that there are 60 seconds inside of a minute. And we're going to have to do 60 times by 30. So that's 30 minutes. And you'll see that we'll get 1,800 seconds. And let's say we wanted an hour. So let's say we wanted 30, so I mean 60. So 60 seconds times by the amount of minutes Oop, I forgot to clear my calculator and then let's say we want 60 minutes and we need to work out how many seconds there are in an hour so we're going to do 60 times 60 3600 seconds in an hour but for the sake of today's tutorial I'm going to set it to 120 seconds which is equivalent if we do 120 divided by 60 to 2 minutes next of all we're going to actually start by making a function that can record when the player was last in the game. So we're going to be using something called os.time. And if we pull up os.time here, you can see we get a little definition. Returns how many seconds have passed since Unix Epoch, 1st of January 1970, 0000000 under the current UTC time. Unix time is basically how many seconds it's been since January 1970, the first 0000000. So we're going to use this to store when the player was last of in line. So we're going to create our function, which is local function record underscore time. And here we're going to put our player so we can pass the player in. Then we're going to drop a line and then we're going to say local success error message equal p call and then here we're going to put function then we're going to put these here and then put an end in and there we go we've just created a p call so a p call is basically a bit like a try and accept inside of python it stops our entire script from breaking when something goes wrong and we're going to use it because let's say for example that roblox's servers are down we don't want our entire script to be broken because it can't write something to the data store. So in here, we're going to put in last online, set a sync, and then we're going to set the value of the data store for the given key, and then we're going to go by player user IDs. Now, the reason we don't go by usernames is let's say the player changes their username, then all their data is lost, but your user ID cannot be changed unless you have a different account. So everyone has a unique user ID, and then we're going to say player, and then make sure you type user ID correctly, capital U, user, and then capital I, ID, and then we're going to put a comma in, and then we're going to put on the os.time when the player was last in line, and then we can go like this, and let's see what the current os time is, just for fun, let's see what the current os time is. So you can see, here I have my output, and then in command, I'm just going to do print, os.time and that is the current os time so that's a very long time and if you can see we press it again you can see that it's already changed so this is a very big number that shows how many seconds have passed since a certain date but now that we've recorded that data we're just going to drop a line and then we're going to say if this people does not work so if not success then print the error message that we put right up here I see I put a little typo there, so I'm just going to fix that. And wait, we've already got our first function down. Still can't type this. Our first function done that sets the data of when the player was last on. Now comes a bit of a difficult part where we need to check if the player can join the game and that they're not in their cooldown period. So we're going to create a function called 
local function check if allowed and this basically means um, check if they're allowed into the game and then we're going to put brackets and then we're going to put player so we can pass the player through and now we're going to make quite a big pickle here so we're going to say local success comma error message equal pickle function brackets drop a line sounded complex and then we're going to say local last recorded time equals last on lines so we're going to get the last on line data store we put up here and then we're going to do get a sync and then we're going to get the data stored to player dot user id make sure you copy user id just like me and that's how we're going to get the last recorded time i put another typo so we're just going to fix that and now you can see that we can get the last recorded time. So if I were to print the last recorded time right now, we would get the time that I was last on the server in Unix time. Sounds a bit complex, but should kind of make sense. Now we're going to work out how much time is actually needed. So we're going to say local time or needed time, or time needed, equal last recorded time plus minimum seconds so we're basically working out how much time the person will need before they can rejoin we're basically adding how long the cooldown period lasts for to the time that they last joined and then using that we can work out when they're actually supposed to join the game so now we're going to say if time needed is smaller or equal to os dot time then print player is allowed in and then we're just going to record the time they were last in by using our handy dandy function we made up here saying record underscore time and then we're going to pass the player now you see we made an if statement we're going to add an else statement onto that so we're going to say else drop a line and then we're going to say local time underscore needed equal last recorded time plus minimum amount of seconds what we did up here so we work out the amount of time they need I noticed that I didn't put up, um, addition there there we go and now we're going to do something different we're going to do local time predicted equal equals Time underscore needed take away OS dot time. So we're going to take the amount of time that they need, take away the current time to work out the amount of time they have for remaining. And then we're going to click the player. We're going to click we're going to kick the player by doing player kick. Now we're going to put in our custom message. You're currently on application cooldown. Please rejoin in. And now here we're going to use a little bit of maths to work out when they should be joining the game. And then we're going to concatenate it with dot dot math dot floor time predicted divided by 60 to work it out in min minutes plus 0 0.5 and then we're going to see dot dot to concatenate it to this next string and then we're just going to put minutes. And if you want to be professional, you can add a full stop. And now that's basically it for this function. So we've got the hard bit out of the way now. And now we need to detect when the player actually joins. Because none of these functions are actually running. Like, they'll never start running. You can see, we may be cooling these functions, but we need to cool this function to actually work. And we're going to have to detect when the player joins. So we're going to do game.players dot player added so when a player joins we're going to function we're going to get the player and then we're just going to drop a line and then we're going to say if last online get a sync and then we're going to put in here player dot user id equals equals nil so if it does not exist then record time player now basically this means if the player has no data 
we need to make brand new data. So if the user is brand new to the game or the data stores are down, we need to make brand new data to make sure we recorded when they were last online. And then we're gonna say else, if they do have data in our services, we're gonna say check if allowed, and then we're going to pass over our player. And that's it. That should be the entire system. So there's just one thing we need to do before we can have this system fully working. We need to publish our game. And I'm just going to call this application center cooldown example. You can call it whatever you want. And now there's a few things we need to configure inside of our game settings. So we're going to head to game settings, go to security, and then we need to enable API services. So this, as you can see in this little italics down here, enables studios to access services such as data stores. And if we enable this, it means that our system will be able to create data stores and that's really important because if we don't have that enabled then data stores basically don't exist inside of our game we're going to click this we're going to click save then I'm just going to publish and now everything should be working I haven't configured this application center so it's not going to work but we're now going to test it out so let's go into testing we're going to click play all right we're loading in everything works just fine now we're going to leave and now if we try to rejoin we should get the cooldown alert so once again for testing purposes I set this to a two minutes cooldown of course you can customize that like we showed you how to do at the beginning and you can see perfect you were kicked from this experience you're currently on application cooldown please rejoin in two minutes you can see that it has is conjointed there I don't really like that I'm just going to give a little space just so we can improve the user experience. So we're going to go right here and we're going to give another space. And let's try rejoining again. I think that may have been a little too fast, but let's see if we still get the alert. Okay, it's now one minute. So let's wait for a minute and then let's see if it works. Oh, still, a few more minutes. Keep in mind that all the scripts will be on the forms in the link down below so you can copy and paste them in. Make sure you follow this tutorial if you don't know so you learned a little bit from this thing. Keep in mind the source code can be found in the link down below. And if you have any issues with this system just head over to the scripting support on the forms where myself or another scripter will assist you. And let's see, our cooldown should be over. Let's give it a play. Let's just close our plugin and amazing, we're back in. Everything works. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. That's all for me. Bye bye and happy developing.